pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Carl, would you do a roll call for us, please? Michael Higgins. Here. Gary Shield. Here. Jim Ferguson. Kathy Walsh. Here. Robert Mueller. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, have you all had a chance to look at the agenda? Do you want to make a motion? I'd like to make a motion, yes. I'd like to make a motion to revise the agenda to put the items under new business which require a vote ahead of the other business due to the fact that I have to leave like in two <laughs> seconds. Okay. And I want to be able to be here to vote for that. I'll second that. Okay, we're going to make an amendment to change this to do new business first. Any other changes? I have approval. Uh, of, of course, we'll vote on that. All in favor say five by saying aye. 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 Okay, second. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> the second was on that. Let's let's uh, let's do a uh, a vote on approval of the agenda itself. So move to uh, approve move by as, a, as amended. Uh, second. Second by Kathy. Any discussion? Not appearing. As for a vote, all in favor, say goodbye. Say goodbye by saying aye. 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 So approved. <clears throat> Has so everyone had a chance to read the minutes from the previous meeting? I think, are you going to vote to? You want to do all right to new business right first? Yeah, all right, let's please. go to new business. I'm sorry about that. That's all right. Uh, the, why you see this on, on the Lamar is that um, the Lamar, Lamar sign is the one that's closest to us at Ozora. Uh, it is the most reasonable sign. It cost us about $1,800 each, each uh, six months. We pay for the first quarter, our, our first six months, and then we pay for the second six months. Uh, so the total amount is uh, $3,600. Um, any discussion on that? Do you wish to make a motion that we renew the sign? So moved. Moved by Kathy. A second? Right. Well, second by Bob. Yeah. Uh, any further discussion on it? Well, I, I think, you know, when we talked about the Drury sign, we talked about leaving the artwork the same for this year and yeah. then uh, look at a change for next year on that. Well, and, and when we do, that, the cost of that is somewhere around um, $500. It's a little over $600. Isn't it, or something yeah, well, five, five, uh, 567 we spent yeah. on that one. I guess I'd like to just amend the motion <coughs> to say that we're going to... Uh, discussion for the next time. That will keep the artwork for this year on the okay. on the Lamar sign and look at it for the next five. Okay. I'll, I'll amend the motion. You second it? Second. He seconds it. Whichever. You made it. I guess you probably I have Kathy made the motion. And, and Bob, Bob, Bob second. Bob second. Okay. Any further discussion? None appearing. I call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None appearing. We approved it. The last thing on the sign, let me say this. The billboards, we already talked about the other billboard, but the, but the billboards, we have to approve that somebody puts a banner on it. So uh, let's make it an open-ended motion that they have to, and the way that works is they have to contact me and the billboard people. And uh, they have to have it down within two weeks after the event. And... Uh, what they do is they send us a bill. Uh, we contact that group that's putting up the billboard banner, and they actually pay for it. So it doesn't anything come out of us, but it has to go through the city. Any discussion on that? No. So I would make a motion to allow banners. I make, or Gary makes a, Gary make a motion. Makes a motion to allow the banners on those uh, policies. Yeah. A second? Second. Second by Kathy. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Not appearing. So so done. Thank you very much. I'm Okay. Um, now let's go back to uh, the approval of the minutes. Everyone's had a chance to approve that we still have a quorum, by the way. Yes, we did. Uh, 
approval of the minutes. Any, any discussion on the minutes or changes or amend, amending of it? As presented. A motion by Gary to approve the minutes as Second. presented. Second. Seconded by Bob. Any further discussion? One appearing. Call for a vote. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? One appearing. It's both passed. Um, the financial report. You have several pages here to sort of tell you, you know, what the finances are. The first page shows us uh, what we've spent. Um, the two great, the three greatest things are the billboard for 18, uh, the TV commercial for 15,850, and the uh, Drury sign, which we pay off in at the beginning of the year, which is 5,700. Still leaving us with. $13,358. This second report that you see shows what the revenues were that are coming in, and you can see that um, we don't have everything for January and February because there are some folks that don't have to pay until the end of the quarter. So uh, we're a little behind. On the fiscal year, if you look at uh, October, November, December, we're down. And, but not any great amounts, but we are down. We're as much as uh, two, three, four, about $400 for the first quarter. Uh, I don't particularly anticipate us being of, of any great height for January and February because of the weather. Uh, two of us are here, Gary and I, and we can both tell you that it was very slow. I can tell you that another thing that is not good is that the Microtel no longer has those five entities that are businesses that he relies on, uh, the, the line mine, redoing their things, the road construction people, all of those are, are gone. So he's probably down anywhere up to almost maybe 50 percent. He um, did comment that the, the January and February have been a very dismal. Yeah, very dismal. So I don't know what that's going to mean to us for our twenty to $22,000 revenue this year. Uh, if we have a big influx of people that are tired of being stuck in their homes, and they start coming out for our spring and our summer, uh, that will help us a lot. Uh, and with uh, the Tourism uh, Advisory Board talking about all of their events that are coming up, we've got more events, we've got more things happening, we've still got our TV commercial running. So those are the things that will help us to, to bring in our revenues. But um, as far as the uh, Treasurer's report to have a motion to accept the first page, which is this one here, is our Treasurer's report. So moved. Motion by Second. Gary. I beat me by Bob. Yeah, I ain't got no. I keep. I'm, I'm not <laughs> gray bearded. <laughs> it could be, could be. I would be, probably. <laughs> yeah. I second it. Seconded by Gary. Hesitant second by Gary. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying yes. Aye. Aye. None opposed except the treasurer's report. Um, the next order of business uh, is the, <coughs> well, it would be the old business. Um, and I don't have anything under that, so uh, we'll go back to new business. Uh, we can't put this on there because we didn't change the 
the the uh, uh, agenda, but uh, a presentation was made more or less at at the uh, tourism advisory board, but Gary wasn't there. So uh, in your packet, you don't have this, but I'm going to give this to each to, to Gary and anybody else in the audience that wants to see it. And this is uh, the opportunity to be an associate welcome center. Bob's already got one. Yeah. You've got one too, haven't you? Okay. Um, and what this means is there's there's also a sheet that you that you didn't get, and, and this sheet is put out by there's probably some lying around here, but this is put out by the uh, you've got this. By the uh, tourism department, which is part of the economic development, and it tells you the, the things that you have to follow to be an affiliate welcome center. Now, the welcome centers that are that are for for real, that are run by the state, that are paid for by the state, are Haiti, St. Louis, Hannibal. Uh, Eagleville, Kansas City, Joplin, uh, Conway West, Conway East. Uh, those are the, those are the formal welcome centers. The affiliates right now <clears throat> are Labadee. I'm sorry, uh, Laclede, Platte County, Eureka, Saint Robert. West Plains, Penville, and Springfield. And what the pro pro <coughs> proposition is that if you fill out all of this and you, and, you, and you do all the things that are on this page, you can apply to be one. <coughs> but the biggest drawback on that is that you must have, uh, up, upon approval by them, you must purchase from the, the, the Tourism Commission and the Division of Tourism uh, with MODOC, a sign on the highway. And the sign on the highway is uh, 10 foot by 7 foot, which is $4,000. Now, that sign is good for 10 years. So they're saying that if you, if you meet all these things completely, then you get a sign, and they'll probably be inspected each year, and you'll have to do all the things that you said you would do, but the, that, that sign's good for 10 years. Uh, but this was effective four years ago? Uh, in 2010. They updated their form then? The form was made then. So is the price effective? The price is still the same. Am I right? Yes, that's correct. They just sent this to me about two weeks ago. Okay. Uh, There are other things that you can buy. You can buy a, a ramp, which is uh, uh, those little signs that you have that say uh, uh, DQ, uh, McDonald's, uh, wineries, you know, gas stations. Now, they're, they're most always uh, grouped together as restaurants and places like that, and then gas stations and things like that. Sometimes they're not when there's just two or three. So you don't have a choice on that. And that's $1,200. And that is probably 1200 each year. I think that's one of the things that in the, in the Tourism Advisory Council we talked about is going back and getting some additional information of yeah. saying they're going back. So we better understand what the financial requirements are on an annual basis. Right. And, and here's, the, here's the thing. Uh, I know that the uh, Tourism Tax Commission looked into this a couple years ago before I came back on. And they found that there were some other fees that were associated to it. They also found that there were, um, and this is why we're just having the discussion on this, not a vote or anything. 
they also found that there were some uh, problems with where the signs were put, how far, you know, how far you are off of them, you know, like, they, they, they say that we're only like two miles from, or three miles from the highway, but the people don't know that because they don't see us getting into St. Genevieve until you get to the stoplight, which is about five miles. So we need to research some of these things and, and, and find out whether it would be an advantage for us. Now, the advantage would be that if someone's going down the highway, and do you get it at both sides? Do you only get it going one way, or do you get it both ways? Uh, and someone coming down the highway that says, uh, welcome center, well, I mean, we can put up our own welcome center. That's true. We can buy a billboard and just put welcome center on it. <clears throat> and that would run roughly $4,000 a year. And it wouldn't be an official sign from, from you know, the state. But, you know, if we found somebody uh, that owned the property out there and would, was willing for us to pay to have a sign built and put up, we might be able to do that. Just like that one that says St. Genevieve, and it's coming from both directions. It's not as big as this, but there's always that possibility. So I, I think on discussion, we, we should just look into it, first of all and find out what, what it is. Now, I don't, <clears throat> I don't think we want to throw this back on to her. I've, uh, um, I've already left a message to ask for additional information. Okay. So the things that have been discussed today, I can easily take those yeah. up when they finally get back to and, me. And let's, let's open it for discussion. Sure. Let, let the two of you talk. What do you think? You see my points about what I'm saying? Yeah, and I, and I think based on the discussion we had earlier today, I, I think we need more information before we can decide whether we think it's worthwhile or not uh, to, to do that but in relation to all the other signage we, we have. Is, do we think we're going to get a bang for our buck there? And until we get this additional information, I just suggest we you know, table the discussion until then. Okay. Does getting the designation put you in other publications that we're it, not currently in? It does. Uh, let's explain yes. that. So the, <clears throat> the Missouri official travel guide um, which everyone got a copy of at the last meeting. This has a list of all the official and affiliate that Mike was just going through. Um, welcome centers across the state. And right now, the only affiliate welcome center in the whole southeast quadrant of the state is at West Plains. Um, there are also uh, other ones, like the Haytai one is uh, along, that's run by the state, as Mike pointed out. Um, so it would give us uh, a star on the map indicating St. Genevieve as an affiliate uh, welcome center. Um, and it would also be listed on their electronic media in the same fashion. I wonder if you could call West Plains and Eureka and just see what they, how they feel about it. And maybe they could give you some information too about what kind of expenses they've incurred. What their actual experience has yeah. been. And it gives you contact at those welcome centers too. And your welcome center is not open on weekends in Eureka. It's not? That's in Eureka? That's Yeah. <clears throat> the one in, in the Eureka one is an affiliate. If you go up a, there, it's not open. Hmm. And that's a requirement that you're open seven days a week. Not a requirement, but it's not open. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's already a flaw in that. <clears throat> it seemed to me to be when you would want to be open. Yeah, you would think so. But it's, you have it's to true. actually get off. It's kind of the entrance into the, uh, how do you say? Uh, Six Flags area there? No, no. It's right there when you go into that, uh, it's uh, about 66th State Park. Hmm. But there's a sign that says not open on weekends. Really? Hmm. You go down the highway and look. I'll be darned. Well, again, I, I would ask this. We had asked in the Tourism Advisory Council for Santa to get some additional information, report back to us. We recognize that funds are not, have not been allocated yeah, for that. Two places for you to call, Eureka and West Plains. Right. Find out. Because if you look, they also have a closed plaque. Yeah, and you have to pay for that. That's $300, I think. Because that's what I thought when I drive by and I go, well, that's stupid. You would want to be open on weekends, but... 
Well, uh, if you talk to your tourism person, you have more people, of course, on weekends than you do on weekdays. Uh, and that just stands to reason more people are off on the weekend than, than they are on the weekdays. <clears throat> Maybe it, they have a high, hard time getting staff in that area. Yeah. Who knows what it might be. But it's um, got to be an operation. Pump, pump, up. They put a, a, about 700,000 of these. I thought it was 300. 300,000? That was the number I, I remember. Well, that. anybody that requests one gets it. Right. They send them out automatically to, you know, all the welcome centers and all the hotels and so on and so forth. And then they send them out as on request. So if you were to call yeah. up the Division of Tourism, they said, Or if you, know, you go push. online and you request, yeah. because yeah. when we took our vacation, we asked for them for various places, and they sent us a thing like this, which we did use. We did use that. Uh, all right. Um, Any other information that you think would be advisable yeah. to request? Well, what about, like, uh, you know, it's going to be a bathroom facility thing when they come to a welcome center. Mm -hmm. We're equipped for that. I mean, I know we got bathrooms. Welcome centers should all have bathrooms, shouldn't they? They do have. I'm just saying. Yeah. Sometimes, if you get like a big little bunch of people. Our biggest uh, demand on those facilities is your defect weekend. So Our that's not going to be impacted by what we would do here. We might want to table this. Okay. Um, the, the last thing I'd like to bring up, in the, and this was brought up at the uh, Tourism uh, Advisory Board, and I'll ask Gary about this, is that he's not aware of the fact that we've been reduced from $2,400, $24,000 a year. It, it's coming up in the future to 4000 on our regular uh, the co-op. Co-op with the leisure. Yeah. And it's because they don't consider anything but hotels and motels. They don't consider bed and breakfast. And it was asked if if the uh, BBIM has a lobbyist. Yeah, we got lobbyists. Uh, and it's got to impact all of the uh, lodging industry, you know, but especially the bed and breakfast. Just send me the information. And our next meeting is uh, March the 17th. 17th. Through the 19th. Through the 19th. I got a board meeting. The, the thing is, is when we talk about SIC codes, as the, there's 17 of them that are tourism related that the state uses as measures of success for tourism, and under the SIC 70 category of hotels and motels and stuff, they do not, they have some sub lists, but they don't put the 701107 in there. And we just don't understand why those are not included in the state's tourism measures. It could be one of those uh, grandfathered in situations where years ago, maybe even before there was a division of tourism, they might have had bed and breakfast listed under ag or some other department. And of course, Division of Tourism is under economic development, and so. We've always been listed underneath hotel and motel. Oh. But you know, if I, I sent you the 17, and I'll send them to you, Gary, also the 17 uh, sick codes, and a lot of those are subsets, but 7011 is not listed on that. No, send me the information, and I'll send it to the board. Yeah. Uh, That's great. I mean, I, I mean, when we talked about this, a destination is not a micro hotel, but a bed and breakfast is, and and business people don't normally even shop in the town. Now I will tell you this: that I had a, a fellow who stayed with us for five days, and his wife, and she stayed here in town, and he was a demolition expert from Virginia, and he was. Uh, working with the, the new concrete, uh, wholesome. And she stayed here, and she walked around town the whole time. But if she had to come with him, and, and I very seldom, when I have a business person stay with me, they don't go into the town, and they're downtown. 
And the people that are out at the microtel do not come downtown to go to the restaurants. I mean, they don't have time for that. I'd go to the shops and go to the historic houses. They just don't do it. Now, it's true that she did. And they spent a considerable amount of money with me in, in my art gallery. But that's probably one of the very few in my 28 years that that's ever happened. So it's not a destination. And they don't include the bed and breakfast who are a destination. And so we need to lobby them. So why, do they, why are they cutting out that dollar amount? Well, I asked Arlen, his yeah. wife's the head of the tourism. She's on the tourism board for the state. Yeah. So we need to lobby that. That's what to, we just want to board. sick you on them. <laughs> well, you know, when you get that kind of information, anything that affects bed and breakfast, let me know. I'm on the board. Well, and and it's true that uh, Perryville doesn't have any bed and breakfast, but one. But we have more money coming in than most do. So, yeah. Okay, anything else to come before the I a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. I second. Okay, we're adjourned. We don't need Channel seven and ninety-eight TV and web broadcasting are made possible through contributions and donations from viewers like you. Thank you for your support.